Good morning, everybody. It is um, 9.29, almost 9.30. Um, I fire up my phone here if I can do that. I don't even know if I can. It's not liking me this morning. Story of my life. Oops. Ooh. Somebody sent me a message first thing in the morning. Um, they're sending me a lot of messages. Uh, 66 degrees today. Uh, gonna be nice. Looks like a nice day today. Tomorrow will be cloudy and rainy. So total, it's gonna be up in this. Oh, it's gonna be in the 80s today. So a little warm. Uh, 9:30 now. Um, so anyway, so let's see what happened, um, this week. Not a lot. Um, one thing I would caution people, um, if you are, um, renting out a house, um, let's say it's your old primary residence. That's not probably a very good idea to rent that out. Um, unless of course you are aware that people do not, um, treat your house like you know it's a rental we've all seen days of thunder right where you know what you can call it uh what ricky bobby but you know what i'm saying days of thunder when rubbing his race in that line um uh, it was a rental um people treated it like a rental right and so people treat houses like rental so we've got an investor who about two years ago three years ago he came to us um he wanted to rent out his primary residence he was going out to california and I'm almost positive, I'd have to go back through the old emails, but I'm pretty sure I ran the numbers for him back then and told him that he was probably gonna lose about $100 a month. Um, and he was okay with that. And I tried to caution him that, um, uh, you know, this is gonna be a rental and people treat them like rentals, right? So um, anyways, fast forward two years, here we are getting the house back and um, it's been three or four years, actually. Uh, anyways, we've gone through two different sets of tenants. Uh, one of them we had to evict. Um, and now here we are. Uh, he's getting the house back. He's decided he wants to sell the house. And when the tenants moved out, you know, they had a bunch of trash. Uh, they put it in bags and they put it on the driveway um, because it was too much trash to be... I got a bug crawling on me. Um, we got spiders all over our house. Anyways... Um, so they had put the trash out by the curb, uh, and it didn't get all picked up. Uh, and then, you know, they had, um, uh, there was a garage that had been converted into a workshop when the owner gave it to us. Um, and the tenant went in and they put in some flooring down. Um, and then they did remove the flooring. Um, but then, um, like they had painted the walls, right? And the walls were not perfect when we took it back from the owner. Um, and so anyway, so he's just a little upset. Um, and unfortunately, I mean, it was just normal. Pretty much a lot of it is just normal wear and tear items, especially for rentals. Uh, and, uh, but the owner is highly upset. Um, and so anyway, so long story short, here we are. And I'm kind of getting to the point where I don't want to, I don't want to manage properties that people have lived in, right? Their primary residence, unless... I'm going to have to create a waiver now that basically people understand that, you know, people are not going to treat their houses the same way that they would treat their, what I want to say, people are not going to treat your house the way you would treat it. Uh, and so anyway, so it's just kind of a lesson. You would think that people, if you're getting into rentals, you would understand that, but they don't. Uh, and I mean, I guess I kind of understand it, um, but I'm more, I'm not an emotional based person as far as rentals go. To me, it's all fiscal. Um, so I just look at numbers on houses and how much is it going to cost me to get it rent ready again? And, you know, I try and figure all that stuff in anyways. So, uh, looks like we've got a couple people online. So, um, today we're going to go through, I was hoping to go through a couple of different videos. Um, I have got, um, one property I wanted to do, um, that's a duplex, but the videos have not come in yet. Um, I've only got the third and final video, uh, but I do have another house. We had a, uh, a tenant who lived in this house who had been with us for five or six years. Um, and I don't know what happened, but a switch flipped 
in her mind and so she got really really upset with us and um, we could do no right and so she decided to move out in the middle of the night uh, and so anyway so we'll go through that property um, and see what we've got on that one um, and I was gonna do this expensive one that the um, the owner um, I was going to do the, the expensive one where the owner, it was his uh, primary residence. I mean, we rented it out for, I think, fifteen or $1,600 a month. Um, so when we got it back and now he wants to sell it, he's a little upset because it's going to take him more than, you know, he can't, they can't move out and he immediately list it. He's got to do a little bit of repair work. So he's a little unhappy about that. Um, so, you know, uh, I think it's a little unrealistic expectations, but, you know, neither here nor there. I get it. You think that the world, you know, a lot of people, and I'm, not talking down to him, but um, a lot of people think that it's going to be a perfect world. Uh, we had one owner who wanted us to rent his primary residence, uh, and a couple weeks before he, you know, moved to Seattle, he had us come over and I showed him some stuff that needed to be fixed to make it "quote unquote" rent ready, um, and he uh, did all of that, and so he gave us a pretty good, decent house. Um, and we rented it out and when the tenant left, I think there was only about $800 worth of repairs that needed to be done. So it wasn't bad. I mean, the tenant had been there for two or three years. Um, so it wasn't bad at all. Plus the, um, the security deposit covered it, right? Well, pretty much covered it. So anyway, so he called me and said, my wife is moving back to Indy. So do not renew the lease. She wants to go back into the house. And I said, okay. And so anyway, so the tenant moved out. And um, I mean, like I say, it was about $800 worth of repairs. It was not bad at all, not especially after, you know, two years of living there. Um, and they called me up and they said, um, hey, um, you know, the house is not in the condition we gave it to you in. And I said, okay, uh, yeah, the tenant just moved out. And so they said, well, you need to get it back up to the condition we gave it to you in. And I said, uh, okay, I can do that, but you're gonna pay for that. And they said, no, 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 we gave it to you in pristine shape. And I said, yeah, but that's the risk you take when you rent a house out. You get it back, you gotta pay for the repairs. You know, I said, we qualify the tenant. We got you a decent tenant. I mean, you know, they didn't do a lot of damage. I mean, it's not like they're kicking in doors, kicking in walls and they're, trashing the house out, you know, I mean, it's got nicks and scratches and, you know, different stuff. And so anyway, so that's why it's, sometimes it's um, expectations are a little higher than what, you know, the rental world is really like. People do not live pristine. And I'm sure a lot of folks that are watching this or, you know, have rented a house and then when they leave, they're like, ah, that little nick in the wall, that's nothing big. I'm going to leave that or I'm going to, you know, whatever. There was a nick out of the countertop. I'm just gonna worry, not going to worry about it or, you know, something like that. And so those are things that get repaired. So anyway, so, all right. So we're going to do this one. Um, I was hoping to do this multifam, but the videos are not up yet. So anyway, so if you guys have questions or something, let me know. But um, let's get into this. <laughs> Now what? There we go. All right, so let's fire this bad boy up. Well, that doesn't help me any. Oh, she left the yard long. Nice. The uh, roof looks good. Yeah, I think we just recently replaced the roof. Pressure washing there. That window has a screen. So does that one. So it looks like we need to do some car. Oh no, that's some screening. Okay, so these are. Um, we used to use just some little. I don't know what you call it. Some furring strips around. So we put the screens on the windows, uh, and we would do furring strips. Um, to cover the screening material. So instead of making frames and putting frames in place, we would just do uh, screening and then do furring strips. So we probably need to still check to see if the caulk is okay. Uh, I think we're gonna have to run gutters away. It's pretty 
pretty good shape. Hey, free bicycle. Who wants a free bike? You want a free bike. You get a free bike. You get a free bike. So fences are oh look at the back bedroom here. Who wants a who wants a free bunk beds? I bet you that gets cold in the wintertime. Free bunk beds. I guess it does have storm windows there. So it looks like that one's got a storm window. So it's got crankable windows um, that can, the louvered windows can be opened up to let air in. Uh, and then these storm windows are put in in the winter time. Uh, but it looks like there's some minor repairs on those. Um, looks like we've got to repaint and replace that door. Needs closet rods. Woohoo! Oh, what's this stuff? Repaint. Looks like the carpets were in decent shape. Excuse me. 
close back windows and some drywall and paint and clean the edges. I'm going to see the kitchen. So the kitchen looks like it's going to need a repaint, and then this if you were working. okay. Yeah, so that's a good question. So do you put in another exhaust hood, which obviously has no duct work. Um, so it really doesn't go anywhere. Or do you just, you know, box that outlet inside the wall and then, you know, so you're ending it. Um, and then, you know, just patch and repaint the walls. So I would say you're going to probably end up... Um, uh, you know, it's not going to do you any good to put another exhaust fan in because it really isn't going to clear the air. Um, so, I, you know, I would probably just frame it in because, you know, exhaust fans are not exactly cheap. Um, you know, you probably got, it's probably a hundred bucks, I think, for one of those exhaust fans. Let's look one up real quick. Hold on. Kitchen stove, no, probably a stove fan. Yes, good, good. That's not what I want. We want a kitchen fan. Hmm. It'll be under appliances. Nope. Oh, it's exhaust hood. I'll bet. No. Man, what the heck? Oh, there's some expensive ones. A range hood. Range hood. Now we're getting there. Come on. Hmm. Under cabinet range hoods. There we go. Now let's look for what's available in stock and let's look at prices low to high. So, yeah, so about a hundred bucks. Uh, this one's a really inexpensive one for 40, which you could probably get away with. This one comes with a light. That's 105. Does that one come with a light? It looks like it's got a little light there. I don't know. So about 100 bucks. Um, 100 bucks for an exhaust hood. I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, we'll leave that Menards window up. So um, Is that cabinet door missing? Woohoo! Free stuff.
missing the shell. The countertops are pretty cut up. So remember earlier we were talking about people like to paint countertops, right? So they like to paint the countertops uh, with an, I don't remember what it is. It's, I can't remember if it's, it, it, there's a specialty paint that people use to paint countertops. And this is why I don't recommend it. Look at these scratches here. And those are probably knife scratches. So were they cutting food on the countertop? It's possible. And if they're cutting food on a painted countertop, then what does that mean? Does that mean that they're going to get contamination from the paint into their food? I don't know. That seems kind of uh, sketchy to me. Hmm. So this brings up a point of do you replace the cabinets or do you try and get new doors? There's no drawers here. So you probably got about a, this is probably a 24 inch cabinet. This is probably like a, a eight or a 12 inch cabinet. Um, and they were originally unfinished, but somebody, you know, put, I think that's probably gun stock stain color because it's kind of a darker color. Um, so, you know, I mean, do you replace, I mean, I think you're, you're money ahead to replace these two cabinets here um, and the countertops because of the cuts and stuff in them. Um, so there's probably $150, $175 for the two uh, cabinets. Some pecs underneath there. Some, so the supply lines are for pecs. That's good. I probably wouldn't replace that cabinet. Where's the fridge go? I suppose we could do a, so this is an interesting question here. So the flooring here is not in bad shape, but there is obviously a transition here. So in this transition from one flooring to the other one, I mean, do we run with this? Uh, do we replace both sets of flooring? I mean, we could easily just do maybe a transition strip here, like a little cheapy tack down transition strip, uh, like a brass or something like that. And that may be doable since the floor is in decent shape. Um, so you can get away with that for next to nothing, or do you replace the flooring and make it all one type of flooring? Um, so I don't know. Uh, let's look at the rest of the flooring. If we're gonna do a lot more flooring in this house, then we might as well just do this stuff at the same time. Install. Trying to highlight some of this stuff here in my notes. Man, that's some sloppy caulking. So this is an older window. It does have a storm on it, though. This uh, window here, I think it's going to come down. Got a crack. Uh, top panel is going to crack. So maybe just a new window there. I think we'll just replace the other panel. Uh, walls look all right. Just this wall is Cabinets, uh, 
there's the fridge. So they put a door on the back room, the back bedroom, so that they could have it as a quote unquote back bedroom. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Woohoo! Free popsicle. I know he stole that. Who wouldn't? A tube just drain stickers. May or may not be a good sign for your drainage here. Real dirty on top of here, but I think it's just dirt. Pool here for the plumbing access. So it just needs to be painted. Unfinished door needs to be painted. Um. Blue walls. That's going to take some coat, some paint. That little alcove. Oh, nice. So a lot of times what's interesting about windows like this is, is um, my video graphers audio. You can't hear it? Okay. Sorry, kids. I'll turn it up a bit. Um, so interesting about these two windows is um, this one comes down and this one goes up. So sometimes what happens is, is, is that people don't realize that this one comes down and then these no longer line up. So like when you go to shut the bottom one, then this one could drop a little bit because gravity works. Uh, so you gotta push up on this one and push down on that one and lock it. So it's a little bit of a finagle, you know, a little handy little finagle there. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's just sometimes people are like, these windows don't fit, they don't close properly, they don't lock. Well, they do, you just gotta push up. Boom, boom, boom. And then it's all over the baseboard. So you're probably looking at some repainting in here, clean it up off the trim and off the ceiling. It doesn't really cover very well either. It looks like maybe a little beige. This window here. Cracked. That's a little paint glass. So 
Yeah, I don't have to go back to the factory. A lot of people don't realize that when you want to get these double pane glass windows repaired or replaced, then you have to um, you have to basically you pull this window out. You got to board it up, and you got to take the window into the the window place, and it takes seven to ten days for them to fix them, and then you'll they'll give it back to you. So it's kind of a job to repair windows. Boom, 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 boom. So what's this right here on the floor? So the carpet's in good shape or what? So one of this person's complaints to get the paint up that's spilled on the floors. So one of the complaints was about, I don't know, six months or so ago from the tenant was that um, uh, she wanted new flooring. She'd been there for five or six years and she wanted all new flooring. And I mean, the flooring doesn't look like it's in bad shape. The problem with installing new flooring is they've got personal items, belongings there. Uh, we don't do carpets anymore, so we only do LVP. Uh, and LVP, the glue down stuff that we use, takes 24 to 48 hours to before you can start walking on it again, really. I mean, to be safe, you want to go 24 or 48 hours. So you end up... You know, when, especially when someone's making demands that they want their flooring replaced. So it's going to be a huge inconvenience for them and for you as the owner because you've got a schedule to come out and, um, you know, you've got to inform the, the resident, hey, I need you to move all your furniture so that we can come in and do this work, you know, and not, not, not even the, you know, we're going to have to warn them in advance, hey, it's going to take 24 or 48 hours for us to do this because, you know, the glue's got to dry, it's got to get tacky, blah, 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 blah. And so, anyways, it's not a pretty process. And we don't like to do it with existing tenants in place because it's just not, you know, most of the time you show up, you tell them they got to move their furniture, and you show up, and then they're like, okay, just give me an hour, and if you could help me move my furniture, that would be appreciated. Well, you're not paying the guys to come out and move furniture, right? So, you know... Sometimes they're nice and they do it, but most of the time we're just telling our contractors, if you show up and they're still moving furniture, then go ahead and leave, right? And we tell the resident, hey, if they show up and your furniture isn't moved, then they're just going to leave and we'll have to reschedule. And so anyway, so it's just kind of a mess. It's just really difficult to deal with. Um, and it's not as simple as we don't replace with carpets because... Is that better, Allie? Can you hear him now? Uh, evidence of some prior patchwork here, but I don't think that that's anything new, so I think that's already been addressed. Boop, boop, boop. So this is like a two-bedroom house. Yeah. Uh, thinking that is that better? Should have a little bit more to it than that. Uh, this is a hollow door. Instead of a doorknob, we've got a plastic bag. So I think you want a new door there. You think? Got some wiring right here in the wall. I may need just a junction box with a blank cover on it. This is broken. Down here, you can see it's not attached. Right in there. So that'll just get reattached and then cleaned out, I guess. Sink looks okay. The floor is real worn right in front of the sink. The bathtub has some excessive amounts of caulk around the uh, between the tub and the surround and around the uh, faucet over there, and it's a little dirty. So probably it'll clean up and then just kind of remove all that caulk and recaulk it so that it's done right. 
them. Got uh, remnants of the towel bar or something on here. So either put a new towel bar there or pull those out and the holes. Nine percent. Hundred eighteen now. Check this out for you. I can't see up there, but maybe you can. From what I could see of the camera screen, it looked like that was clear. So I can't see up there, but maybe you can. Empty. Good to go there. And the uh, light and fan are working. There is right over next to it here a little bit of. Uh, Issues, so let me patch that. She's got a bedroom on the back, a bedroom on this main floor. Is there an upstairs? I think there's an upstairs in there. Oh, the closet's in this bathroom. All right, another mop. No shelf in here, so I don't know if it came with one. Um, but it's not there now. And that door closes but doesn't really latch. Oh, that's an original door. And we've got the same thing on this one with. There used to be a towel bar there, so either pull it and uh, patch it or put a new towel bar. But Did you check to see if there was any? This room. We're going to want to patch this hole in the drywall, patch that ceiling area around the light, probably paint then, uh, and clean up the caulk around the tub, maybe some flooring work, and some towel bars for the doors, and then. We talked about this, uh, the main door to the bathroom needs to be replaced. A little closet here. No shelves. Alright, find that, that's fine. Another bedroom. Door closes, latches. So, may just need like a piece of wood in there, a little brace, and reattach it, um, or may need a new door. Uh, door knob will need to be tightened on as well, and then it needs maybe a door stop, um, one of the just round ones there, cover up that damage, keep it from damaging it anymore. This might be the wiring for the security system. Unplug it! It's too loud! I'm sure he'll appreciate your comments, Tim. Tim said he's an awesome videographer. So I'll replace some blinds. Yeah, these blinds are broken, so you need new blinds here. Let's have a look at the window, though. Looks all right. These blinds also broken. On to the next one. It's got some pretty good shape. Check the closet. Looks pretty good. Inside of the door looks all right. I think there's an upstairs, isn't there? But I don't remember seeing stairs. Light fixtures working in here. Yeah, we got another ten minutes, so there's got to be an upstairs. Some stuff on them over here, and there was some scuffs, writing something right along here. Yeah, we're gonna have to repaint. Repaint throughout. So kind of normal wall damage. Um, and then they've got the purple paint on the trim over there. I would say this room probably just pull all the hooks and stuff out, patch up the drywall. And paint it. And the uh, flooring in here doesn't look 
too bad as long as it was still the purple paint. Yeah. Ah, 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 blue ah. Room, I guess. Nice. So and he'll probably just clean the carpets and should be good there. So this room's not too bad. Fix the door, new door stop, remove the security system wiring, new blinds, clean. Woohoo! I knew there was an upstairs. Hooray! Mm. Is it gonna be cleanable? I don't know. Looks like it's. Boop, 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 boop. Tear it up. Let's tear it up. Books, left some books. Got a free dress. Oh, the door looks okay. Not my color. Closes but does not latch. On the outside of the door looks all right as well. A little bit of like drywall damage here, so we probably walk into the wall. Yeah, low roof. Into it, so low ceiling. Bad. Some of this furniture here. What is that? Some glass on the floor here. Something broke. I don't know sure what that's from. Glass top table, maybe? Cleaned up. I don't think that's on the switch. Nope. switches that on the stairway there that don't seem to be operating anything. So this little wobbly fan here. It's got power. Uh, Maybe it just needs a bulb. Just missing a bulb. On a road to nowhere. That window there you can see has its screen. It doesn't look like it's broken. This window here has screen. Looks like it's in decent shape. Some car keys left behind up here. Some extra hangers. But mostly cleaned out. I mean, the flooring doesn't look bad in this place. Cracking it down at the bottom. It's not super visible when it's on the inside, so we might be able to get away with just kind of patching that. Door closes, but does not latch. A hole there. Cable or something. Let me clear out all the trash up here, the furniture and everything. I think the carpet's just need, gonna need to be cleaned. Uh, get rid of that dresser. It, so. And those blinds don't look broken from here, but they are missing the uh, spindle, I think. Paint looks okay, walls look all right. Somewhere over here that might clean off. It's gonna so need to be repainted here, throughout. This in pretty good shape, I think. Just clean all the trash out of it. Some new blinds for this window. And I think that'll about do it there. I'm a little surprised that it looked like the, there was heavier wear and tear on the steps. Oh, dark. Uh, Hello, somewhere. darkness, my old friend. There. There's a little bit of trash up the top of the basement steps. 
Doesn't look too bad down here. It looks a little dry. That's good. We'll see though. Boom. Something got whopped. What's that stair to? We did the image of that. So those bottom two steps need to be repaired. <laughs> well, you uploaded the video, so you must have made it out. See any obvious issues there? Walls are looking okay for basement wall. Yeah, a little bit of moisture in there, penetration, but I'll bet you that's from gutters. I guess there's a bathroom down here. Hey, nice toilet over there. Yeah, yeah newer panel. panel. I think we installed that. Obviously, power's on in the house. Press block window. Not thinking that works too well, but it is here. It's a beautiful toilet. And the sink right next to it, yeah, on the floor, on the ground. Washer dryer hook hooks. Your setup for a three prong dryer. Oh, three prong dryer. over here yeah wow well, there's quite a bit of bigger trash I have to budget I keep having to raise my price on how much I'm gonna do trash removal windows some miscellaneous trash here furnace filter so maybe they were actually changing it hot water heater it looks like electric put some spiders down here yeah I think we've replaced that electric water heater it's newer and gas furnace looks newer. Yeah. And I think there's everything down here. I didn't figure out where these lights are supposed to turn on at. This thing's a little strange. Oh, it works. Pull chains throughout. On those pull chains. It's not a decently dry basement, not bad. I think if we ran the gutters downspouts away from the property, ten feet. Or from the house, ten feet, then uh, we would probably uh, be even drier. Anyways, um, I don't know if any of those are supposed to be controlled by the switch up at the top of the stairs either. So not bad. That covers PVC. Here. There's PEX. So now I just have to get my way on out of here. This wall is a little dirty. Um, maybe paint it again. And oh, you know what? I don't think we got that one side where the fence cut us off. Jump the stairs! Jump it! We made it. Woohoo! I need to get this side over here, the house where the fence blocked off before. Free snow shovel. Free mop. Free candy out of that van over there. So, the van down by the river. That fence when we were doing the backyard. Um, but we didn't get over here. So this window has a screen. There's the electric meter. That uh, downspout there, if it has an extension, it doesn't go very far, I don't think. The grass is pretty long there, so I can't really tell. But there's an extension here. I'm thinking maybe that was what it had on it. Gas hookups. And this window here has a screen. There's no gate for the fence. So this would be a pretty tall chain link gate. Um, that's not there. Thing. That's us. There's another camera there. So I'm guessing that's linked into the security system somehow, but I don't know. Is it worth it to pressure wash and paint the the green? On the outside and inside. So we're done here. Would you leave it green? Would you paint it a different color? I don't know. The gutters are undersized. Those are itty bitty little three inches. 
um, but that's a pretty steep roof anyways so it's probably uh, you know you're gonna have a lot of water coming off of that pretty fast but you know I can't see a reason to replace it at this point um, it's not a necessary item but if you do I would put in the four inch or five inch gutters so anyways all right so let's run our numbers here um, Clean repair gutters is needed. I'm gonna say it's probably around 350 because there was some repairs on the back. Assess cover fill hole near back of house. I have no clue if that's gonna be something easy to fix, if we can get something to cover it up and then uh, paint it up. So I really don't even know. Um, check the caulk on the windows. We'll consider that miscellaneous. I vote power wash and change color, Tim said. Um, yeah, we've been hitting this owner up a lot lately. He's had a lot of vacancies lately. Um, so um, he actually got through most of his vacancies over the past um, six months. And so this is like the last holdout or the newest, <coughs> excuse me, the last holdout. Um, so I don't really want to kill the guy with. Um, um, so this one here, minor trash removal, there's quite a bit actually. So I'm just gonna say trash removal throughout um, and remove bed blinds and curtains. Um, I don't think there's any flooring that we need to, to yank up at this point. Maybe the stuff in the bathroom. Um, but that might be our guys who are doing the flooring in there and they can yank it up because it's, uh, I'm just gonna take that out. Um, all right, remove back, replace back, back room closet door and install closet rods. Um, that's probably hundred bucks. Uh, interior repaint. So we basically have got um, back room, kitchen, dining area. We've got um, living room. We've got, um, uh, I was going through the house other bedroom we got the other bathroom we've got a little hallway there we got the upstairs one so we got about six rooms right and we figure about 150 bucks a piece um so there's what six um is that 900 bucks something like that um yep 900 bucks we'll probably add in a little extra because there's um we'll add in one extra room because there's a lot of dark colors that are going to have to do it so it's probably a thousand fifty to paint it Replace kitchen ceiling light. You know, let's just add in, I don't know, 25 bucks. Um, replace exhaust hood or close off wiring and patch paint. This is what I'm voting more for right here. Um, replace repair stove or pitch. I'm voting for pitch. Um, then replace two end kitchen cabinets and countertops. So it's probably about 150 bucks for uh, cabinets um, let's see here where is my Menards screen um, let's do unfinished uh, so hello so you can replace the doors uh, the doors are uh, 30 bucks, um, you know, 22 to 30 bucks. We'll just say it's about 30 bucks. Um, let's see what's in stock. And then let's see here. So there's a, a base cabinet, 60 bucks. That's a 12 incher which is probably about what that one is. So it's about a 12 inch, so there's 60 bucks there. And there's a, oh, we should have just, while we were in there, let's just change it to 24, 24. And 80 bucks there, so 60, so you're basically 140 bucks there, plus taxes, so about 150 bucks uh, in cabinets. And then the countertops are probably gonna run 80 bucks. So let's just say we're at 250 by the time we get done with all the other accoutrements we got to do, uh, you know, and caulk and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's just materials and then probably about 150 bucks for installation and staining and all that sort of good stuff. Um, so yeah, I think that that $400 should cover us. Repair kitchen window glass. Um, that was that cracked window. Um, it's probably more like 50 bucks. 
uh, or replace the window. Um, I probably just get away with just, uh, oops, that's not what I want. I want that to be, this one to be the repair instead of the replace. Install threshold and kitchen for flooring transition. I don't know, let's just say it's probably 15 bucks. Um, and then fix hole, create cover panel for kitchen access and kitchen dining area. That shouldn't be too bad. Um, we might even just open up that hole a little bit more or just patch it. Um, but then we've got that countertop. I don't know. I'm going to say uh, 50. No, I don't know. Yeah, probably 50 bucks. I don't know. Replace cracked storm window off dining area. That's probably 50 bucks. Uh, repair front double pane window, 150. They're not cheap. They're about 70 bucks to replace those. And then you got labor to drive it over. Excuse me, drive it over there. Let's just say it's a 125. Uh, replace the bathroom door. So it's probably, what did we say it was last time? It was 40 bucks, 50 bucks for a, a, a door card. Um, and um, so that's probably like, 75 bucks there replace medicine cabinet that's probably like 125 replace flooring in the bathroom um it looked bigger than your standard 30 square foot so let's say it's 60 square foot so there's probably 250 180 dollars in flooring but we gotta get rid of the old stuff so let's say it's probably like 250 um correct me if i'm wrong tim if you think i need to do something replace caulk around tub um i'm gonna say about 50 bucks because of that old stuff is nasty and gotta clean out install shelves and bathroom closets you know, 50 bucks install towel bars and bathroom let's say it's like 50 bucks it's probably not that much 25 um, install shelves closet rods throughout um So let's say we got 150 there. Replace front bedroom door. What did we just say earlier? $75. Um, replace blinds throughout as needed. I'm gonna say it's probably about 150 bucks for blinds because by the time you buy the blinds and then you install them, remove security system wiring in bedroom. I'm not even gonna charge that. Replace trim on top of stairs. There was that area that was needed, some sort of a trim or something like that. I'm gonna say maybe, I don't know, 50 bucks. Uh, remove coax cable lines upstairs. That's just miscellaneous. Replace carpet on stairs. I don't know if this needs to be done or not, so we'll have to look at that. Uh, install handrails on stairs as needed. Um, basement and upstairs. Um, I'm going to say it's probably 100 bucks. Repair bottom two stairs. That's probably 150 bucks. Miscellaneous. I'm going to say... I don't know. I mean, I included a lot of little itty bitty items and stuff like that, but let's still leave this around 750 and final clean king carpets. And I think that's going to probably be about $400. So 250 for the final clean and then another 150 for um, doing the carpets um, because there was some heavy staining and stuff like that. Uh, and it may even be more than that, maybe more like 500 for that. Um, seems like our guy lately has been going up in price. Um, so, all right, so where are we at price-wise? Calculator. We are at 350 plus, 500 plus, 500 plus, 100 plus, 1,050 plus, 25 plus, 150 plus, 100 plus. Nope, I messed up. Man, my nose is itching. So sorry, guys, you get to watch me itching my nose. Um, I'm taking out this 250 here, the 150 and the 100 for those because those are just... Um, uh, you know, what I want to say. That's up to the owner if he wants to do those. So let's do plus 400, plus 50, plus 15, plus 50, plus 50, plus 125, plus 75, plus 125, plus 250, plus 50, plus 50, plus 25, plus 150, plus 75, plus 150, plus 50, plus 100. Oh no, did I lose all my numbers? Oh please. Plus, oh, I lost all my numbers. Son of a gun. We got to start all over again. 350 plus, 500 plus, 500 plus, 100 plus, 1,050 plus, 25 plus, 400 plus, 50 plus, 15 plus, 50 plus, 50 plus, 125 plus, plus 250 plus, 50 plus, 50 plus, 25 plus, 150 plus, 75 plus, 150 plus, 50 plus, 100 plus, 150 plus. 750 plus 400. Not 4100. Minus 4100 plus 400. 5615. 
So, I mean, she was there for six or seven years. Um, so that's not, that's not horrible. I mean, she was there for quite a while. Um, Um, so, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not totally, um, you know, I mean, the property was in decent shape, but there's a lot of stuff that, you know, over the six or seven years that she was there, you know, just needs to be repaired and stuff like that. So a lot of this, though, is, you know, stuff that happened while she was there. Um, she's obviously probably not going to get her security deposit back. I mean, she's not getting her security deposit back just based off of how much trash she left us, right? She's got to know that. But I wouldn't put it past residents they think i right, getting all my money back no no you're not um all right so let's look and see what this guy um let's see what i can figure out um so we've got 5615 times 1.2 6738 so we got about uh, 6738 let's just say it's seven thousand dollars in rehab and let's see if we can figure out how much he paid for this property ba -ba 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 -ba. can't show you guys what he does um hold on a second here let's see if we can figure out how much he paid for this property um So he bought it for twenty-two thousand. So this is numbers are going to work out well. These are going to work out well for him. Twenty-two thousand. Um, he's got seven thousand in rehab on it. Uh, he probably paid a thousand for closing costs. Now, you know, I will say that he's probably put, you know, three to five thousand dollars in it over the past five or six years. So let's. You know, let's just look at it. Um, well, we'll run it like this. Let's just say he's got uh, 27000 in it, right? So that adds about an extra $5,000 that he's put into it over the past five or six years. So um, we're, what was it renting for? Um, I think it was renting for 700 a month, um, which is a little undervalued. Um, why am I? There we go. Um, we're going to put in our normal, it's a single family house, um, average or maintenance or repair costs. It really wasn't that high, but we're going to leave it at that anyways. 10% uh, for property management, real estate, school, and taxes. How much is he paying for taxes? He is paying $931 a year. That's not bad. $931 a year. Um, and then property insurance is probably $550. Um, so that's about a 13% cap rate. That is not bad at all. Uh, I would take that. Um, like I say, I mean, I, I don't understand what changed with this resident. I mean, you know, we were, if, if we were asked to make a repair, we were responsive to it. You know, she asked us to come in and replace the flooring. Um, and, you know, we had talked to the owner about it and we um, were kind of dragging our feet. I don't remember the whole scoop on all that sort of stuff. I think we went back to her and said it was going to take a couple days to do the flooring. And then she was like, no. So I don't know if she had carpets brought in on her own or if, um, you know, whatever. Um, you know, and then at one point in time, she'd asked us to install a uh, central air system. Uh, which is about um, a three thousand um, dollar install, twenty five hundred to three thousand, um, and she had offered to pay more in rent, and so we were considering that. But then again, I think we went back to her and said, you know, gave her the scoop on that. So anyway, I don't know. All of a sudden, she just got really mad at us, and she just decided that her lease was up and she was moving. And so, um, you know, we were trying to figure it out. And of course we were horrible, horrible people. And I just couldn't figure out something that changed. Um, you know, we had always been responsive for repairs and some of her complaints were that we weren't fixing things, but she had never put in tickets for us to fix things. So sometimes, you know, it's COVID time. So I don't know what happened. So anyway, so she moved out. I think it's still a very profitable rental for him. 
Um, you know, you're at 13% here, and that's including the $7,000 worth of rehab. So that's not bad at all. So anyway, so, all right. Um, let's go back to me. Let's go here. No, I don't need that. That's where we're going to be. All right, so um, we're out of here. Um, it's 1037. We're a little over. Uh, good thing I didn't do two of them. Um, so anyways, if you have any questions, comments, put them down below. Um, appreciate you guys. Click like if you like the video. Um, otherwise, I will see you later. Thank you.